lecture number, uh, I mean, slide number seven. Is it? Yes, sir. Okay, so, and that the slide number seven, and, uh, actually, the today's discussion is going to be about the IPv4 header format. Okay. So, uh, we already uh, know that the network layer is responsible for sending the data by finding the paths between the source to destination. So, that the network layer is actually providing the datagram services. So, that datagram means here that the header size and the payload. So, what is the payload here? So, we have already said it in earlier class that in the transport layer, uh, we are going to send the data. So, we are having that the header and the data. So, these will come to the network layer so now this part of that the fact in that the network layer is going to be my so with that i'm going to be have the network header all right so now that the part that i have received that the part i have received from that the transport layer uh, as a data that is actually my uh the payload okay so this is saying that the datagram means here the header size and the payload so the payload is my uh, the datagram that I have actually received from that the transport layer. Okay, so we are talking about the header size here. Right, exactly. That the data you have received from that the transport layer, yes. But the data is actually basically from the transport layer because the header plus data. So it is the data into that unit clear. So that is actually your payload, okay. All right, so in the header size, uh, we are discussing here that the IPv4 header. So the IPv4 header format is 20 to 60 bytes in length. Okay, so that the minimum size of the header is going to be 20 and maximum size is going to be 60. So that the number uh, can be that uh, in between any number, the 20 to 60 bytes, uh, the header that we are talking about, the IP header we are talking about. So now it contains information need for routing and delivery. Yes, definitely that we know the <clears throat> uh, this the uh, internet layer or network layer header who is uh, who is going to be include uh, the IP addresses for the source and destination. Actually, that in the IP header, the format we are going to be have that is actually the uh, today's discussion point. So you can see that here we are having the source and uh, destination IP addresses, thirty two bits for the IPv four uh, addressing uh, for IPv four header format. <clears throat> So that means in that the header we are going to be add these actually uh, the fields that actually today we are going to be discuss. So actually these are the informations are going to be held uh, nature clear of the source node uh, uh, to pass that the data from the source to that the destination via the intermediary nodes. So that the, these informations the header informations are going to be uh, help the network clear node by node communications that is going to be done that okay you're sending the packet from node a to b b to c something like that so how that the uh, packet is going to be traveled from this node by node so that actually this header is going to be uh, uh, useful for delivering the data uh, and for for discovering the routing okay so uh, these informations are going to be important so when you're finding the paths and as well as when you are delivering the data so it consists of 13 fields. So you can check that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So total 13 fields are there into this uh, IPv4 header format. So it provides essential data need to be transmitted the data, yes. So the payload we are going to be have, that the payload we are talking about, the payload is going to be in between 0 to 65,515 bytes, okay, if the header size is 20. Okay, we know that, I mean, we are going to be discuss it actually in the total length. So it will come in our discussions. So the payload is going to be here uh, in between zero to, uh, zero to the 65,555. So zero is that the minimum and 65,515 is maximum when the IP header size is going to be 20 bytes. All right, so here uh, the fields now we are going to be discuss one by one here that uh, the first bit is my version uh second bit is my header length uh, sorry second field is my header length 
so service type is 8 bits total length is 16 bits identification 16 bits flags 3 bits fragmentation offset 13 bits time to life 8 bits protocol 8 bits the header checksum 16 bits uh, source ip address 32 <clears throat> destination 32 so these are the fields that we are having if you are just uh, counting the bits the total bits number is going to be uh, yeah it's going to be 160 160 bits so if you are just uh, dividing with the 8 you know that 8, uh, 8 bits equals 1 byte so you can get here the 20 bits 20 bytes okay so that is actually the minimum header size that you can see here that your ipv4 header size is going to be minimum 20. so <clears throat> uh, let's start the discussions of each of the fields one by one so first it started with the version uh that is the four bits field so you can see that the versions you are having so that the four bits means here that it is going to be uh hmm, like that right so of four zeros it is going to be the four zeros two four one right so that means we understand this is from the zero to fifteen <clears throat> okay so that means uh here it specifies the version uh four bits fields uh, it specifies the protocol version the internet protocol version <clears throat> ip protocol version okay so uh Currently, we are using that the IPv4. So if it is IPv4, then the person is going to be uh, 0, 1, 0, 0. So if you're converting, it is 1, 2, and 4. So you understand that this is for that the IPv4. If it is 6, then 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. So 1, 2, 4. So 2 plus 4 equals 6. So in this field, if it is uh, the version is 0, uh, is because it is going to be IPv4 header format. So it's going to the version here we are having that is going to be here 0, 1, 0. So out of this 15, I mean, 0 to 15 um, bits. Okay, so 0 to 15, uh, I mean, uh, the numbers we are having that we can use here, right? So only the 4 and 6 has been used because we are having only two versions of IP uh, internet protocol at this moment, 4 and 6. So that the 4 one is going to be with this one and 6 one is going to be with this one. So we are actually discussing about that the 4. So this is that the version is very important in the sense that when you are going to be sent a packet from a node to that the another node, the first thing that the node in the packet from say that this is A and it's a B. So when the B is going to be received that the packet from that the node A, the first thing it is going to be see that what is the version, okay, which version actually has been used uh, in the packet. So in this case that is going to be ipv4 because we are using that 0100 because we are discussing about ipv4 header format so the next bit is my header length and that is also the four bits okay so mm, the header length four bits specifies the length of the ipv4 header okay so uh this field the four so four bits means again that it started from four zeros to four ones so that means zero to fifteen so here uh the header length is going to be uh, the length by that you are going to be understand that how much header size actually on that the receipt packet so header length is going to be tell that the total size of the header in the packet okay so that is how it is going to be help you to find out the uh, data uh, okay that i mean but, um, okay so uh, here that uh, that the it's you know that when it's the four bits start from zero all zeros to all one right so remember that it is not using zero 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 or even zero 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 one okay so it started from actually zero one zero one so if you are counting it then it is coming one two four so it is five right so so it is started from five what is the reason actually we represent that the header length uh, multiply by four so if you are multiplying the uh, four with the five, then you're having the 20. And the all one is representing 15. So if you're multiplying it with the 15, or multiplying it with the 15, then you're getting 60 bytes. So you are using from 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 4, 1. Why? Because you know that in the P4 header, in your minimum uh, header length is going to be 20 bytes. All right, you understand that? And this is going to be the maximum byte so it can be any number in between okay for example that you have received uh zero one 
one and one for example okay so uh, in the header length it has been you uh, it has been found that these bits are given so what is the meaning of this it is going to be one two and four so how much it is coming seven right two plus uh, four plus two plus six six plus one equals seven so you multiply that the seven with five okay so you you know that uh, it is going to be the 35 bytes header size understand clear sir can you repeat sir uh, this slide sir i didn't understand for my bad network sir yeah what i said is that uh, the header length is going to be uh, this field is going to be informed the node that actually what is the total header size a packet uh, a has sent a packet to b so after receiving that the b if the b is looking to the header length he will be able to understand that okay how much what is the size of that the header in that the packet that he has received so we say that uh, our uh, this is the four bit fields so we say that our uh, uh, ipv4 header that supports 20 to 60 bytes that we have said already 20 to 60 bytes in length so for the 20 bytes so this started from 0101 and so this is going to be the minimum and this is going to be the maximum that all for one okay so the number can be uh, the header size can be in between any number 20 and 60 it can be 20 or it can be 60 or any number in between the 20 and 60 okay so i have given an example that okay if that the b in the packet he is seeing that the header length is uh, 0 triple 1 then you can find it out that it is 1 plus 2 plus 4 so it will you get the uh, 6 uh, sorry 7 so you are going to be multiply with 4 i'm sorry it is going to be multiplied with four so that the header size is going to be 28 now understand yes sir yes sir i got all right so uh this is the fact you know and now the next field is my service type you also call it toss the type of service so currently uh this uh toss known as that the differentiated service port point dscp so before going to the dscp how it was the toss was look like uh it has it, it had actually the two fields the precedence and toss so this is the eight bit fields we have you can see that here it is the eight bit eight bit fields out of eight bit the first three bits are precedence so this is the p with the p i have represented it so these three fields are used for uh, showing that the priority, okay, that is uh, maybe the priority. So if it is priority, it is going to be represented with 0, 0, 001. Uh, if it is uh, immediate, then 0, 1, 0. If it is routine, then triple zero, something like that. So there are different type of precedence. Uh, priority things are assigned with these three bits. Okay. So the next five bits we are having here, this is the D, T R C okay and that is the zero okay so the DTRC you are having here so they have the each, each of them actually having the meaning like for example the D representing here the minimizing uh, delay so uh, minimizing delay so if it is, it is going to be represent as because it is one bit it is going to be represent with one or zero so if I am making it one so that means this flag is going to be turned on okay so this is the d uh, the delay uh, is going to be turned on so where actually we are going to be required it so that we are we are making a call through that the whatsapp okay so that is actually we call it voip right the voice over internet work protocol so that uh, on that the voip right so when actually we are using the whatsapp so when i'm talking with you you are not going to be desire any delay uh, when I'm, I'm 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 talking with you when i'm saying something to you so you want to hear it immediately okay so if you want to minimize the delay on that case actually it is going to be desirable that your d is on here okay the type of service d is on here so actually you are uh, requesting that minimize delay that when we are going to be talk with each other so that there is i mean the when i'm talking you are listening and also you're answering immediately i'm also listening so that means the now uh, the, the d is going to be one but if it is 
in in certain applications if it is not required the minimize delay so it is going to be make as it is zero okay so that means zero means disable one means enable something like that now you are having that the t t means here the throughput okay so say that you want to increase that the maximize that the throughput okay so if you want to maximize the throughput you want to make it one so yes when you are going to be saying the data so you want you know that the throughput means that a number of data you are sending in a given amount of time so that means you want to send that the maximum packets from the, the sender to receiver right so uh, that is actually going to be increase your uh, throughput so that is i mean if you want this field to turn on then you are going to be make it one if you are not then it is going to be zero the next thing you are coming that r that the reliability r means the reliability so if it is on then you understand that what is the reliability means the reliable unreliable that you have studied so the reliable reliability means here that the sender and receiver sender is sending the data to the receiver over the intermediary nodes so the packet should not should uh, should not be that for I mean any packet drops uh, when you're sending the data so that uh, that is going to be the reliability here so if it is you want reliability in some application then you're making it one otherwise it is going to be zero then you are having the cost the minimize monetary uh, uh, monetary cost so what does that the if it is one then actually uh, the sender and receiver will choose the least cost path shortest path actually okay so if that the cost is on then the sender and receiver is uh, will try to find that the shortest path between the sender and receiver for sending the data if you do not want then it is zero and that is actually reserved <clears throat> okay that is actually reserved so later on this has been changed to the ds uh, cp that uh, differentiated services code point so in the dscp what happens here we know that our toss is actually eight bits filled service time so out of the eight bit fields they are keeping that uh, the dscp for the six bits they are keeping for dscp the differentiated service code point and uh, the rest of the two bits are for the ecn that is the expl uh, explicit congestion notification okay so now uh this uh the ec and the explicit connection notification means what that for example you are sending that the data in between the nodes okay so you are sending the data one of uh, packet one uh one node to that the another node you're forwarding the packets so when uh there is going to be a congestion in the network you know you know that what is congestion that it, uh, we say that the traffic jam in the road so in the network also it can be happen that the buffer is full in a node so if it is buffer the full it's buffer getting full then that uh, packets you are sending that the packet is going to be dropped okay so that means packet is going to be lost so if the uh, ecn is turned on right so that means uh, if the explicit condition notification is turned on on that time um, it is that the node is not going to be actually dropped at the packet rather than it's going to be inform the sender that okay in the network the congestion is present so please send the packet slowly okay so uh this is that the advantage of having that the ec and that explicit congestion notification the packet is not going to be dropped rather than that device is going to be tell to that the sender that okay please send that the packet slowly because we are having a congestion in the network so now that i mean uh but there is a fact here that this ecn service must need to be agreed with both the sender and receiver then only i mean it can be usable clear is it clear yes sir all right thank you so next thing is coming is that the total length total length is my 16 bits so the total length uh, is representing the entire size of ip packet so that means it includes the header size and payload so what is the header size and play payload that i have already said here to you so that the uh, datagram that you have received from that the transport layer to the network layer that is actually your payload and the header that you are having <clears throat> So if you know that the header length, okay, if you know that the header length from that the header length field, that is here header length. 
so if you are knowing that the header length from that the uh, uh from that the field uh, header length field then the uh it is a 16 bit so to do the power 16 uh, means here that 65000 uh 535 okay so as because it start from zero that's why it is after 535 so if you know that the header size from that the header length field say that it is 20 so just if you are subtracting it then you are getting it 65515 so that actually you are getting so this is what is saying that the minimum the minimum size uh the minimum size is 20 bytes when there is no data and the maximum size is 65530 bytes with 16 bits so what does it mean it means that if there is no data you are having the 20 uh, i mean 20 bytes but there is no data you did not receive any data from that the upper layers so that means the minimum size is going to be 20 okay because your ipv4 header format your uh, header size uh it's going to header length is going to be minimum 20 bytes so saying that when there is no data and the maximum size is going to be 65535 okay uh with the 16 bits so that means maximum size is going to be this so mm, the total length is going to be 65535 uh, so you, you know that this is your header size and plus this is your data size so if you're adding them, then also you're getting the same thing that the total length is going to be the 65,535. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. So here the data uh, is can be from the 0 to 65,535. So now if you know that what is your header size, then you can also calculate the payload. Okay. So if your header size is 20, then it's going to be 565,515. Okay. So this is what actually is trying to tell that actually the total length is actually including the header plus the payload okay so you can calculate it i mean i mean how much data is there and how much header is there okay so the next three fields it is coming that is actually the the identification 16 bits flags 3 bits and fragmentation offset is 30 bits remember that this ipv4 addressing header format we are discussing this is really important topic for the networking field so if you're giving any lecture on that the networking field uh, about the computer networks then it usually that uh, uh, that the judges are like to ask you the questions from this ip4 header format so make sure that you're listening this lectures very carefully because this is really important topic for that networking field <clears throat> so now here that we are talking about that the three field that we are having here this is actually the identification flags and the fragmentation offset so this is that the three fields are actually used for the fragmentation okay so we are going to be discuss these three fields here on so you say that identifier flags and fragment offset so you said as an ip packet moves through the internet it might need to cross a router that cannot handle the size of the packet the packet will be divided or fragmented into smaller packets and reassembled later these fields are used to fragment and reassemble packets so what it uh, what does it mean it means that for example that you are having a node here another node here okay so that is a router for example so you are getting that the packets in the router uh and uh from this router the packet has been received say that it's 500 bytes okay but this router have the link with this the uh, next router it can support only the 250 bytes data at a time then what is going to be happen i mean uh, definitely that the router will will, uh, will not be able to send that the 500 bytes uh, uh packet uh at the same time because that the maximum limit is here actually 250 so that means you need to be fragment uh, by that the router the receipt packet 500 that should should need to be fragmented okay so the fragment that means you need to be actually break that the uh, this packet and you need to be make it uh, with manageable packet size the smaller packet size <clears throat> okay so this is one is saying that i mean these fields are used to fragment and reassemble the packet so after 
uh, dividing them that the fragment you are sending to that the other router so of course that uh, uh, those fragments are need to be combined into that the receiver end okay so that is actually saying that mm, the reassemble packets at the receiver end also is going to be important here so it is going to be clear more clear so we, we, here we are actually uh, discussing this identification and flags and uh, fragment offset separately so we say that uh, in the case of I, uh, identification, IP, IPv4 software maintains a counter in storage device to record the number of IP datagrams. The counter value increases by one every time a datagram is sent and is filled in the identification field. <clears throat> so what does it mean? It means that when you're sending a packet, we have said earlier that the packet is going to be uh, divided into smaller size packets so that you are having this P1, and you are having the p2 and you are having the p3 so p2 p1 to pn as uh, i mean the packet is going to be divided, divided to p1 to p, pn so now that you are for example you have divided here that the three packets p1 p2 and p3 so now that the uh, packets you are sending the p1 p2 and p3 so how the receiver end will understand that uh, what is the sequence of packets what is the I mean, uh, what are the packets are there? I mean, that it need to be reassembled. Okay, so that's why for each of the packets, there is going to be an identification number. So this is 16 bit fields. So say that if it is first P1 is 11, then the next uh, P2 is going to be 12, and P3 is going to be 13. So that these are going to be the identification numbers. Clear or not? Yes, sir. Yeah. So if you're looking to the flags, then you can see that there are three bits, okay? So you can see that these three bits representing here, uh, the first bit, the leftmost bit, we are talking about the three bits, say that it is three zeros, for example. So then the first, the leftmost bit, the zero, this is actually reserved. So we say it only the rightmost two bits are valid. So that means the leftmost bit is not valid, it is reserved. So the second bits is representing here, that is, I mean, uh, that is representing the DF. The DF means here the don't fragment. So uh, I already said that when you're sending the packet from a router to the another router, a note to that the another note, I say that if this is the 500 bytes of data it receives. So I say that maybe here the maximum range is 250 at a time this router this router uh, one will be able to send to that the router two. So that means I say that you need to fragment, you need to be uh, break this packet and make it uh, one to n fragment for sending it from the R1 to R2. So if that the second bit is zero, then that the router one will be able to do the fragmentation. If router is saying seeing that the second bit here is one so that means router one knows that fragmentation is not allowed in that case r1 should need to be dropped the packet understand yes sir so that the next one is, the next bit the last bit we are having that is the representing the more fragment mf so more fragment here also we are going to be represented with the zero and one so if it is one so that uh, this router is having the three packets to send p1 p2 p3 so it, it did not said anything yet so uh, is there i mean the fragments are in uh, are inside that the i mean in the router for sending i mean do you have any packets in your hand for sending if it is yes then it's going to be represented with one so when you send the p1 uh, then again it is going to be asked that do you have any packets more to send if it is yes then one again the p3 you are sending uh, sorry p2 you are sending uh, yes p3 is uh, you are sending so after sending the p3 you do not have any packet to send so that means it is going to be represent the mf with the zero do you understand that or not are you listening yes, to sir. me yes sir all right so now uh, let's see that fragmentation work with a numerical example. So this is that the numerical example is very important for your midterm examination as well as for final examination. So please be concentrated. So 
here you can see that it said a datagram of 2000 bytes a datagram of 2000 bytes where the ip header size is 20 byte and ip payload size is 1980 byte so 1980 bytes okay so this is how that i mean the payload and header you can see that it's 2001 uh, 1980 and that 20. so you say that a datagram of 2000 byte reached at a router so this is we are showing that in this figure that router has received a 2000 byte data okay and it said uh reset router and must be forwarded to the link with maximum transmission uh unit that short in short form we call mtu of 500 bytes so this router has received the 2000 bytes but it can send or it can forward uh the data right maximum 500 byte at a time okay that is actually said so it must be forwarded to link with maximum transmission unit MTU 500 bytes. So maximum 500 bytes you can send it at a time to the network. Okay. How many fragments will be generated in this router? And also uh, find out the MF means uh, more fragment and in the offset and the total length all right so we have said that the datagram of 2000 byte so that has been received by the router so you can understand that if that the ip header is 20 bytes so that means this much of data i am having that uh, this router is having to that that he need to be sent to the next node in the network and uh, so that is what i mean we are showing that 20 bytes for header and 1980 uh, that is for that the data so now here we say that five, the mtu is 500 so that means the router will be able to send 500 bytes at a time to the uh, to a node in the network so that means we cannot send actually the 500 bytes because there should need to be the uh, the header the 20 byte header for that the ip layer right so that means IP header should need to be 20 bytes. So that means the 480 bytes of data will be able to send at a time. Okay, understand or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So now you can calculate that number of segments, number of ticket segments. Sorry. So you say that you can send from this router to a node in the network. 500 bytes at a time okay so this is the datagram that you will be able to send from this router to that a node in the network so out of that the 500 byte this is an ip datagram so it's going to be that ip header 20 byte and 480 bytes you are going to be the data you will be able to send understand or not yes sir so 1980 is also for that reason right sir yeah in the router you have received that the 2000 byte out of the 2000 byte 1980 is your data so this much of data you need to send from the router to the node in a network understand or not yes sir so these are 30 or 40 they are 30 or 40 minus yeah definitely that if you are having for example here 2010 byte for example so 30 bytes is your header uh, or it can be like that. I mean, 30 bytes is the your IP header, and that 1960, uh, 1970 could be that the data. Understand or not? So based on that, actually, you have yes. to... clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now that uh, number of fragments you are going to be required, so that how much data you need to send? The 1980, uh, 80, right? 1980 bytes. Yes, so that is the size of the packet and how much data you'll be able to send at a time that is the 480 right we're talking about the data remember not that the header so you can see that 1980 byte divided by divided by 480 yes so you are getting that 4.125 okay so we can see that uh, with the four fragments, we will be not able to send that total uh, 1980 bytes. 
so it is going to some frictions are there so if you are getting some frictions then you should need to be take that the upper value so that means actually you require require the five, five. okay if you are getting for example that 5.001 that much of uh, fragments you require means that you need six six, six uh, fragments do you understand that or not if any fractional value is present then you need actually the upper value clear yes sir yes sir yes sir all right so that the five fragments are going to be required so let's represent this five fragment with that the p1 f1 is p1 f2 is the p2 and f3 is that your p3 f uh, uh, f4 is your p4 and f5 is your p5 so you are representing the fragments with that the p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 so now we are going to be calculate the total length right well, this has been said that calculate the total length value for all so we are having the five five fragments we need to be calculate uh, the value for all of them so you know that for the p1 we are sending uh, mtu is the 500 so 20 bytes is for header and 480 bytes is for data right so that we are sending with the p1 isn't it or not yes, yes. So, Fragment same the 480 data and 20 byte header. Second one also same 480 data 20 bytes. Third one is also same 480 byte plus header 20. And fourth one is also same 480 byte plus 20 bytes. So now, if you are just simply uh, adding this 480 plus 480 plus 480 plus 480, or you can multiply 480 with four right because you are having the four uh fragments so here actually you have seen the 480 bytes of data isn't it or not understand or not sir. yes sir. you can multiply also 480 uh multiply four because four segments you have seen the 480 data so 480 bytes so in total it is coming the 1920 bytes if you are multiplying the 480 with four then uh, you're getting the 1920 bytes. So how much bytes you have sent? Uh, you have to send 1980, right? 1980 bytes you have to send. So you have already sent with the four segments, uh, four fragments, you are sending that uh, 1920. So 1980 minus 1920, how much it comes? 60. 60. So that in the P5, we are going to be have the 60 byte and header is going to be 20, right? Understand or not? yes sir all right so now uh, we are going to be calculate that the mf mf means what the more fragment so when you are uh, when you are going to be saying that the uh, in the p1 right so do you have any fragments in your hands to send when you are sending the p1 no sir no sir no sir, sir to understand that you are having the five fragments right into this router okay so router is going to be sent the p1 so is there any other fragments after sending the p1 is there any other fragment the router is going to have? yes sir we have more four fragments five right understand or not so when you are sending the p1 do we have uh, more fragments to send yes sir. yes we are that's why it is going to be one. Understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you are sending that the P2, do you have any more fragments with you? Yes, sir. Yeah, you are having the P2 and P5, right? So now, when you are sending the P3 from the router to the net, uh, the device to the network, you are sending the P3. Do we do we have any more fragments? Yes, yes sir. sir. So that's why it is going to be one. When you have seen that the P4, do you have any more fragments in your hand? Yes, sir. Yes, that is the P5. So when you are sending that the P5, do you have any more fragments in your hand? No, sir. No. So that's why it is going to be zero. Clear? Yes, sir. All right. So now, um, let's see that what is going to be the offset. So it's in the offset field, this is the fragment offset is the 13 bit fields and we say that it specifies the location of a fragment in a packet actually the number of bytes eight of the packets 
so it means that how many bytes actually you have sent right so that uh, the router is going to be sent a packet to the net uh, to, to a device into the network so how many bytes is already sent that is going to be count so before sending that the p1 does he send any data out of this 1980 before sending the p1 does it send anything no sir one is the starting fragment so that means he did not send anything so that's why it is zero now when you are going to be saying that the p2 does it send something yes sir p1 yes the p1 so in the p1 how much data he sent Four right remember that yes. he saying that 480 byte data this is his header so he sent the 480 bytes data. So we are not writing here 480. In the offset, we never write this 480 uh, as an offset. What do we do? Look, that it says that fragment value is represented by dividing the data with eight. Okay. So you say it offset is always scaled by eight. So therefore, that you are sending the, uh, before sending the P2, you have sent the 480 bytes. So divided by eight. Understand? Always it will be divided by eight. How much by two, uh, you are going to be right here? 60, right? Understand or not? Clear. Yes, so now when you have sent this, now come to that here. P3. So before sending the P P3, did you send any data? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. P1. Yeah, you have to think that data. If you are saying the P1, then it's both. Only data, look that 480 and plus 480, okay? Yes, sir. So that means it is going to be 480 plus 480 divided by 8. If you're doing that, then you're going to be get 120. One. So now, when you are going to be sent P4, before sending the P4, how much data you have sent? Three, uh, uh, three fragment you have sent, data of 480, 480, and 480. So if you're just multiplying or uh, doing the addition 480, 480, 480 plus 480 plus 480 and divided by 8, you'll get 180. 80. So now before sending the P5, you have sent 480, 480, 480 and 480. So that actually you are seeing that the uh, last fragment, the 480 multiply 4 because the four fragments you have sent, the data size was 480. You can multiply it or you can add them. 480 plus 480 plus 480 plus 480 like that and then divided by 8 so you are getting that 240 so that the last uh, offset uh, for that the fragment 5 p5 is going to be 240 do you understand this yes sir, yes, sir. sir could you repeat please mf yeah mf means that okay you have you know that you need the total number of fragments, five fragments you need to be sent from this router to send all that the 1980 bytes of data, right, from this router. So how many fragments you need? Five. So you, now when you're going to be start sending, right? So first one, you're going to be sent definitely the fragment one, P1. So when you're sending the P1, is there any other frame, fragment, do you have, that means, uh, of course, we are having because we have created five. We are sending the first one, so there are more fragments are uh, with the router. Next, it, it is going to be sent for sending. Next, do we have any uh, fragment with us when we are yes. sending the P1? Yes, we need. Uh, we are having the four more fragments, so that's why we keep one. So if you are having uh, when you are sending a fragment or packet, you can say that P1 is a packet. So when you are sending the P1 packet, you are having the P2, P3. Uh, p4 p5 four packets you are having so that means it is going to be one so here when you are sending the p2 uh on that time after sending the p2 do you have any more packets yes you are having three p3 p4 p5 so three more packets you are having so it is going to be one so now when you are sending the p3 do you have any more packets after sending this yes you are having the p4 and p5 two more packets so it is going to be one so now when you are sending the p4 do you have any more packets after sending the p4 yes that is the p5 so that means it is going to be one. So now when you're sending the P5, do you have any more packets with you after sending the P5? No. No, sir. So that it is going to be zero. Clear? Yes, sir. Clear. That's good. Okay. 
Ayan. Anything else? Any other question? Sir, uh, can you uh, please tell me the 480 and 20? I mean, about these two things again, sir. Again, uh, I did not understand your question. Sorry, sir. I did not understand your question. Repeat it. Sir, I mean, uh, why we are sending 480 and 20? I mean, uh, 20 is header and 480 is the maximum, maximum byte. Yeah, so I understood now what you have asked. Listen very carefully to me. That you are receiving this router how many bytes? 2000 bytes? Yes. Is it? And it has been mentioned to you that out of that the 2000 bytes, you are having that the header 20 bytes? Yes, sir. That means you need to be sent 1980 bytes. That actually you have shown here, right? Yes, sir. So now it says that must be forwarded to link with MTU. The maximum transmission in it is a 500 byte. Understand or not? Yes, sir. Yes. So now the datagram, uh, the 2000 bytes you are going to be say, sent that you should not be able to change the header. Clear or not? Yes, sir. You can send the 500 bytes, so that means out of that the 500 bytes, the 20 bytes you need to be keep for header. Yes. And the rest of the 480 bytes of data you'll be able to send at a time. Yes. So that's why we are making it between the 20 and 480. Understand? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Anything else? Anybody? Okay, so I think it's clear to you all. It's very important for your midterm and final examination book. That, that's why I have uh, given you here the two exercise. So this one is actually easy. So it's just you need to be follow the same procedure. It's uh, it, in this question is just asking that number of fragments. Okay, to calculate the number of fragments. Okay, so you can. Uh, you can just follow this procedure but the next one it is a bit complex one but it's uh, it's also easy if you actually understand that the question properly so that here say it say that host a sends a udp datagram containing 8880 bytes of user data to host b over the ethernet lan ethernet frames may carry data up to 1500 bytes so that means the mtu is actually 1500 bytes Size of UDP header is 8 bytes and size of IP header is 20 bytes. That's are given to you. And there is no option field in the IP header. How many total number of IP uh, fragments will be transmitted? And what will be the last uh, contents of the offset field in the last fragment? Okay. So how you are going to be calculated? Remember that it is talking about that host uh, A has sent an UDP datagram. And it is talking about only that 8,000 bytes of user data. Understand? So UDP datagram, we have shown that the transport layer, in case of UDP, layer, uh, UDP protocol, we say that there is going to be the header and the data. So the header, we know that in case of the UDP header, the header side is fixed. That is the eight bytes. And the data size here, it's given that the 800, uh, 8,880 bytes. So that means you should need to be add them. Okay, so 8,000, uh, it should be the 848, right? 8, 8, 8, 8. Understand or not? So this much of uh, data actually you have received from the transport layer to the network layer. Understand or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. An IP header given uh, 20 bytes. So now you can you can just follow that this procedure, and you'll be able to easily find out that uh, how many fragments and what is going to be the uh, last offset. That means this is talking about to find about this one, right? Last offset. So you can easily will be able to find it from here on. So this is that the four options has been given. So which is the correct answer? This one is going to be correct answer. So you can you can just do it at your home and you can check it that is coming or not. If it is coming, then it's going to be, I mean, 
correct answer okay if it is coming after doing the calculation all right so that means we have uh, finished that the discussion of fragments uh, these three fields the identification flags and fragmentation offset now let's check about the uh, the next fields like time to live protocol header checksum source ip address destination ip address and options and padding so now we are having here that the time to live so it is an 8 bit fields what is said it is possible for an ip packet to roam aimlessly around the internet if there is routing problem or a routing loop then you don't want packets to be forwarded forever a routing loop is when a packet is continually routed through the same routers over and over the ttl field is initial set to a number and decremented by every router that is passed through and when ttl reaches to zero the packet is discarded so what does it mean the time with the time to life what we are trying to do is that this field is added uh, with the ipv4 header format because say that you are having a note here you are having a note here you are having a note here and you are having a note here so now that the packet it can happen that uh, due to that the routing problem or due to that the routing uh, um, uh, there can be uh, i mean uh, well, there is a possible that the packet is going to be travel i mean in a loop okay cycling actually so that if it is a b c and d so that a a b c d a b c d a b c d so this is that the packet is going to be in a loop okay so it can happen that the packet is going to be in a loop so this ttl field is going to be uh help uh i mean so so that i mean this loop cannot be infinity time uh move on okay so that the time to live value is going to be set so that if the time to live value set is six for example okay so i have start from here this is one two three four five six so when it comes here so i mean it is going to be every note it is uh, passing that it is going to be decremented by one so when it is going to become here at uh, again do it one two three four five six so it is now in zero so that means it is now it is going to be dropped that packet is going to be dropped from this note do you understand that what is the use of time to life field yeah so i say that i mean this is that the there so that i mean if there is a loop if there is a uh, loop okay <clears throat> that the packet should not be forwarded forever for the infinity time to stop that actually you are using the time to life field so when a node is sending a pa packet on that time he is going to be set a timer a time to life value okay so i say that for example it is uh, 6 or say so that okay uh, 6 so that means when it's going to be sent to the b uh, and it is going to be minus 1 now its value is 5 so when it comes to that the c it is 4 minus 1 4 now it is come to uh, the d it is going to be three now again it goes to that the a it is two now it is going to be again moved to the b it is one now it is again moved to that the c then it's going to be zero so that when it reaches to the zero the packet is going to be dropped so there is no i mean that is going to be counted as a uh, routing globe packet so it is going to be dropped from that the packet when the time to life is zero understand or not yes sir mm. So the next thing is coming is the protocol okay so that the protocol we are having here the protocol so the protocol field is the eight bit specifies the type of protocol carried in the datagram okay so means that i have said that datagram is coming from that your upper layer right oh, maybe it's, it's remote. okay so you are uh, we have said that from the transport layer we have said that from the transport layer you are getting that the header and data and it will come to the network layer right so in the network layer now in the ip ip header in the header this is the field you are having the protocol field so in that the transport layer which protocol it has been used okay so it can be the tcp it can be the udp any application protocol as well so that is going to be represented with the protocol number. For example, in the case of UDP, we have seen that the for the UDP, the protocol was number was 17, right? So if it is 17, then by seeing it, uh, it is uh, of a receiving node, receiving device, we'll understand that, yes, UDP protocol has been used. Do you understand that or not? 
So this protocol here, if it is the UDP, then 17 is going to be used in this field. Clear or not? Understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, good. So the next thing is coming, that is the uh, header checksum, that is the 16-bit fields. So uh, yes, we know that how to calculate the checksum. Okay. So when you are sending the packet to a device, Okay, so that you are sending the packet from the device A to B. So you have calculated the checksum value uh, in at node A, and you have added that value with the uh, with the with the header checksum field. So now when the B has received uh, that packet, on that the packet header, it is going to be check that what he has received. So with that the header checksum, that all the data is going to be. Uh, make the addition and then with that the once complement it is going to be fine that it is all zeros or not okay so all the 16 bits if it is zeros then you'll understand that there is no error in the packet so if there is an error it is going to be dropped so you know that if it is all eight all 16 zeros then it is going to be uh with no error so no error means it is going to be able to deal with the packet and it's able to send forward the packet to the next node but if it is finding that uh, uh, here it's getting the 16 bits uh, after one's complement, it is getting the 16 bits uh, with the combination of zero and one, then you will understand that there is an arrow into this packet. So he's going to be dropped this packet. Understand or not? Check some field. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So for example, that here we have seen in case of the UDB, the testing. Right. We know that each of them are one byte. So there are seven bytes of data. Okay, so seven bytes of data means what? I mean, each each of the byte is going to be eight bits, right? So that means you need to this here that eight bits, eight bits, eight bits, eight bits. So that means thirty-two bits for test. Okay. So for example, you are having uh, uh, the TES. Uh, say that TE only TE you are having. So how many bytes you are having? Two bytes. So that means you need two more bytes so that there are going to be 16 zeros understand or not to make it 16 uh, uh 32 bits filled understand for here the yes, testing sir. you are having testing so there are total seven bytes so that means uh you need 16 bits 16 bits uh so 32 bits here and here you are having 24 bits so that means eight zeros are required to make it 32 clear understand sir. yes sir that's good okay then you are having the source address and the destination address so with that you are going to be specify the ipv4 uh ipv4 i mean ip address of the source and ipv4 ip addresses of the uh, destination so you understand that i mean with this actually we are doing the routing uh in the in the uh network address topic we have discussed it as well as we have done it into the cisco packet tracer at lab right so you understand that what are the, these two fields are these are the main fields without these fields i mean if these two fields are changed in between the source and destination then the packet will never reach to the destination right yes sir. yes sir options and padding the last field you are having the options and padding so this is going to be 0 to 40 bytes why because we have already calculated, we have shown it that all the fields we are having in the IPv4, IPv4 uh, header up to the destination and IP address, uh, here we are having in total 160 bit, uh, 60 bits. So in, it is 20 bytes. So we know that it is going to be the 60 bytes. Uh, maximum, the header format is going to be 60 bytes. So that means 60 minus 20. So that is going to be 40. So you are having any options, and then definitely that, I mean, it is going to be uh 60 minus 20 so that means 40 bytes of information it is going to be uh possibly added with that the options and padding okay you understand or not so you say it that uh allows uh these options are going to be allows the ip4 to support various options such as uh fault handling the measurement security so for example measurement uh if we're actually carrying that i mean uh if you want to keep the record in each note the route record that okay where from it comes and then uh, say that in this in here uh, that you want to keep the route record that a b it started from a for example it is a b a to b right and then when you go to the next node 
name that is going to be at the route record that it is come from a b and c and so on understand or not so here i mean that the options are going to be added uh when it is going to be required some extra things you need to send from that with the packet okay so that can be for quality of service the options okay like the fault handling measurement and security and padding that i just already uh said you right the padding that uh that here that you are adding the extra bits to make it 32 bits all right you understand sir in case of checksum in case of checksum what do you say in, in case of checksum that all the fields are uh zero i mean after so the packet has been sent from node a to b so a is going to be calculate everything that it has received with the packet after calculating uh, the sum he got that the sum is going to be once complement and after making the once complement if he's getting that all zeros 16 bit zeros that means he will understand there is what no error so that means he is going to be understand that he correctly received the packet and if he is he is getting that uh, after once complement if he is getting that combination of zero and one so he will be able to understand that uh, there is an error so he is going to be dropped at the packet and in case of the padding that is actually uh, is going to be added to make it at the 32 bit fields okay as because uh, it is going to be the 32 bits field right so the data is going to be with that the 32 bit fields so you are having that i mean here uh 64 bits in total uh because t e s t you are having the seven bytes so seven multiply eight you're getting the isn't it or not so you need more eight bit to make it 64 so 32 32 right 64 so if you are having that for example you are having as a data it is t e then how many padding you are going to be used how many bits are going to be in the padding 16 bits 16 bits very good so if he, if he, if it is uh, having the tes the data then how many bits are going to be as a, as as a padding eight, eight bits. bits eight bits very good so <clears throat> this is what that the padding is so that with that actually we are finishing uh, that the today's discussion uh, we have complete that all the fields of that the uh, uh, i mean of that the ipv4 header format okay so we have com completed all the fields from here on all the fields we have completed from here on the discussion so your midterm topic midterm syllabus is going to be up to up to this 14 number slide including that the two routing protocols that you have studied that for the distance vector and the link state routing algorithm okay and already uh, with that you are going to be uh the lecture four lecture five lecture six as well as that ipv4 addressing lecture from the lab so this is going to be your midterm exam syllabus clear yes sir. okay so i'm maybe i'm going to be announced that the consultation hour date maybe it is going to be held on that tomorrow or day after tomorrow okay so it is uh, the time is going to be maybe 7 30 in the evening time 7 30 or 8 pm so i'll let you know by the google class classroom so if you have any problem with any topic okay uh, from your midterm syllabus bring them on that class and we are going to be discuss those okay Okay. 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 Yeah. So we have not taken that down. up to the slide number fourteen, and with that also we have discussed about the two algorithms, right? Link state routing algorithm and then the Bellman Ford uh, algorithm, right? Distance vector, link state and distance vector algorithms. So that are going to be also from this lecture, right? Seven.